Hello, Russian learners, and welcome to another episode of Russian Questions Trainer at the Arus Pro channel. Last time, we practiced answering and asking the question U kavo, who has something, or literally, in whose personal universe, or near whom something exists. Today, we are going to practice the question Chevo, and we are going to look at various situations where we use this question. So, let's achieve it! First of all, let's review a little bit, and let's imagine that you didn't hear what I said, and you are asking a question to clarify, just like we did last time. У меня есть маркер. У меня есть маркер. Маркер exists in my universe. У кого есть маркер? So, you didn't understand this part, and you are asking again to clarify. У кого есть маркер? So, near whom, in whose universe? У меня. Now let's imagine that you didn't understand the word marker or you didn't hear it well. What would be the question to clarify this information? У меня есть маркер. Same sentence. Что у тебя есть? What exists in your universe? Что, we use что for an inanimate noun, marker. And the answer corresponds to the question word. Что маркер? У кого? У меня. Now, before actually asking the question чего, let's first construct the statement. Imagine that I didn't have a marker here. I would say, what would I say? We need to negate the sentence. I don't have a marker. How do we negate in Russian? Normally, we put не before the verb. For example, сегодня я не работаю. Today, I don't work. Literally, I not work. Не работаю. Here, since we also have a verb, есть, exists, we will negate this. But, here's the thing. We don't say не есть. We say simply нет. Нет. That means non-existence. Something doesn't exist. Or literally, there is no of something. There is no marker in my world. Now, since marker is gone, so there is no subject. The subject is gone from the sentence. We need to mark this fact that the subject is gone. How do we do that in Russian? We will change the form of the word marker and it will be markera. У меня нет маркера. Now, students often ask me, why this form, why is it so strange? It was a masculine word, marker, ending in a consonant. Now, it resembles a feminine word. It ends in a. Ah, how come? So, what happened? Let's analyze it. First of all, this is, this sentence is not similar to the English, I don't have a marker. In English, it's standard sentence structure in both positive statement and negative statement. I have a marker, subject, verb, object. I don't have a marker. Same structure, subject, verb, object. So, a marker is always the object of the sentence in English. But in Russian, it was the subject of the sentence. Marker exists. When we negate this, we cannot leave it in the subject form because 
it's gone from the sentence. There is no subject. You, uh, you can see it uh, very clearly in the past tense form, right? So let me put here the past tense. I had a marker and I didn't have a marker. And let's see what the difference is. So I had a marker. У меня был маркер. Literally, marker was or existed in my universe. У меня не было, не было маркера. I didn't have a marker. This is how we say it in Russian. We use the neutral form of the verb here. Here we use the masculine form, был, and L. L consonant, consonant, masculine, masculine. Here it's neutral. Why is it neutral? Marker is masculine. Why is it neutral? Because there's actually no subject in this sentence. When marker is gone from the sentence, there is no subject. And the verb takes the neutral form. So what is this then if it's not the subject of the sentence? This is a form that just refers back to the absent subject. It is, it looks similar to the subject form, but it's different enough so that you can definitely say it's not the subject. And I assume we put, or uh, historically, uh, the language developed these forms to, to make them very different from subject forms so that you definitely know its negation, its absence or non-existence of something. So the more different this form is from the subject form, the more clear it is for the listener that it doesn't exist anymore. It's absent. That is why marker, masculine, becomes markera. Now, when we negate, as I said, we, we want to really emphasize the negation. So we really want to let the other person know that we negate something. In English, for example, if you really want to, to stress out that you don't have a marker, probably you would say, I do not have a marker. So you will make this negation as long as possible so that the other person knows for sure that you don't have a marker and they don't have any doubts about it. In Russian, sometimes we also elongate this word. Sometimes we say, Нету. У меня нету. Markera. Nieto is a very colloquial word, and uh, some people would say, would consider you probably not very educated if you use this. But don't, don't believe them. It is very commonly used by well educated people and not so educated people in colloquial speech, in everyday language, in informal context. Where does this come from? It comes from tut. So tut is a colloquial word for здесь, here. Tut and здесь means the same. Here it's just tut is more informal. So again, in the process of language development, these two got glued together and we now have нету. So this word нет or нету denotes non-existence or absence. And it's actually different from the word for no when you just say no, I don't have a marker, right? So this нет, which means no, is different from this нет by its meaning. Very good. I hope it was clear. Now let's move on to the question чего. У меня 
нет маркера. Чего у тебя нет маркера? So here, if we want to clarify what was said before, we will use the question word чего. Чего fits the form маркера, like the key fits the lock. What is not there? What doesn't exist in your world? Here we cannot use что, what, because что only corresponds to the subject form. But remember, this is not the subject form. There is no subject in this sentence at all. So what about different nouns in this form, in the non-existence form? You already know that masculine nouns like marker acquire the R ending. Well, actually, R is one of the two endings. R is the hard option. Marker, markera. Marker ends in a hard consonant. That is why we add R. Slavari, dictionary, ends in a soft consonant. And it is marked by the soft sign. Словарь нет словаря. So we put я, the soft indicating vowel. Чай, T, ends in Y. This consonant is always soft. Ча, я. Again, we choose the soft, the soft indicating vowel. If you are having difficulty identifying what is hard and what is soft, And if you're having difficulty pronouncing hard and soft consonants in Russian, visit our website, the alphabet page, and there you will find exercises and audio to listen to and to practice saying hard and soft consonants in Russian. So this is masculine. Neutral nouns do the exact same thing. Malako is the subject form, milk. Нет. Malaka, there is no milk. O becomes a, hard option. A, a. Решение, solution. Нет решения, there is no solution. E, the softer vowel, becomes ya. Again, same as masculine. And feminine nouns behave a little bit different because they always do. Машина нет машины. There is no car. А becomes ы, hard option. Семья, family, нет семьи. Я, soft, и is also soft. And there are a few feminine nouns ending in the soft sign. There are not many of them, but they exist. For example, кровать, bed. Кровать, кровати, нет кровати, there is no bed. So again, softer version, и, e, soft, and и, e, also soft. Very good. Now, let's practice. Чего у них нет? У них нет бензина чего у него нет у него нет визы чего у вас нет У нас нет зонта. Чего у нее нет? У нее нет электричества. Чего у тебя нет? У меня нет вайфая. Чего 
у него нет. У него нет воды. Чего у нее нет? У нее нет места. Another situation when we use the question word чего is the of case. Those of you who watched the episode about birds of a feather who flock together already know that of, the of case, you already know what it is. And today I want to highlight another meaning of this. So, for example, бутылка молока, a bottle of milk. So here we are talking about some quantity. There is молоко, right? So this substance, this noun in general, что это, это молоко, subject form, and молока of milk. So it marks just a part of this, of this substance, right? Of the whole volume of milk in the world. We take only a bottle of it. Бутылка молока. Бутылка чего? We will ask in Russian a bottle of what? Бутылка чего? Бутылка молока. We use the same form as in нет молока. So exactly the same form as the non-existence form. Чашка чая. Чай, чая, a cup of tea. Чашка чего? Чашка чая. Ложка сахара. Сахар, что это? Это сахар. Ложка чего? Ложка сахара. So, this, this is the of form. What if we wanted to describe this noun? What if we wanted to say a cup of hot tea, for example? Let's see what we will do in this case. Горячий чай will be hot tea, the subject form. And чашка чего? Горячего чая. So here the ending of the adjective will also change to the of form because adjectives always follow nouns. They describe nouns and they always follow them in their gender and uh, their form, their case. So this ending, ЕВО, right? You see, ЕВО. ГОРЯЧИ, ending И, turns into ЕВО. What if it's ending ы? It's also a masculine ending because both чай and сахар in Russian are masculine. But this is the hard ending of the adjective and this is the soft ending. So белый turns into белого. О, ге, о. But we pronounce it as ово. Белого. Right, emphasis is here. That is why these are not stressed. Белого, горячего. And the neutral noun, молоко, топленое молоко, baked milk. In Russia, we love dairy products and we have a variety of them. So baked milk is one of the products that people really like in Russia. Топленое молоко. Neutral ending, but you know that neutral nouns and masculine nouns take the exact same form in this case. So, ово, same thing. Топленого бутылка, топленого молока. A bottle of what? Of baked milk. Spoon of what? Of white sugar. Ложка белого сахара. So why am I speaking about the adjectives here? Because now, uh, in a few moments, I will explain 
a few very conversational phrases that people say often in Russian. And we use the same idea there, but uh, normally students cannot understand why we say it like this at the first time when they study, when they start studying Russian. So, but before I get to that, let's look again at the endings. You noticed it's spelled ye ge o ye go or o go as in che che vo da che go but we still pronounce it as v why why do we pronounce the endings of adjectives and question words che vo ka vo as v instead of g actually before in the 15th century we pronounced them as they are written o go and ye go but then in some regions of russia in some dialects people started to pronounce them as o vo and ye vo and people start writing them like this so it would be like this not with a g but with a v uh, but then <laughs> again something happened and the pronunciation stayed the same so People continued pronouncing it as v, but the spelling came back. Actually, I don't have enough information on it, but if you are interested, later I will uh, look at it again and find out. So, these were adjectives. Let's now take a look at a few phrases, very common, that use the same case, the of case. The colloquial phrases that I was talking about are phrases like what's new or what's funny and to understand the structure of these phrases in russian let's take a look at these words so in russian we have uh, a type of words that look like adjectives but actually they are nouns for example животное an animal or мороженое an ice cream why are they like adjectives Again, it's connected with the history of the language. Животное literally means living. And the full context is животное существо, a, li a living creature. Мороженое literally means frozen. So a frozen substance, a frozen milk, for example. Мороженое молоко. And since Creature, существо, and malako milk are neutral in Russian. That is why uh, we use the neutral form. And actually, the neutral ending of these adjectival nouns is uh, connected with their concept. So now they have lost their noun, right? And now they are seen like a, uh, a neutral something especially when we are talking about concepts for example novaya it's like all the things new so it's not it's a very abstract concept you can you can switch on your imagination and imagine like a cloud of all new things it's a very abstract thing and when it's very abstract, very vague, it doesn't have clear borders or something. It's neutral. Same with other words like this. Novaye, smishnoye, all things funny. Nepanyatnaye, all things unclear. Strashnaye, all things scary. And so on. Plachoye, all things bad. Haroshaye, all things good. So we have a bunch of such ideas, such concepts. We hardly ever use them in their subject form, but we use them in these, in this type of phrases. Что нового? What is new? So what is the structure of this? Что is what and Novava is of, of, novoye, right? Of all things new. 
So what part of this big cloud of new things, what part do you have in your life, in your world? We can say, что у тебя нового? Right? So this is, again, the of form, just like a bottle of milk. Just one bottle of all the milk in the world. Just a piece of new things of all new things in the world. Что смешного? What is funny? We can also say что тут смешного? Тут is the colloquial word for здесь. Like what is funny here? What is funny in this situation? Again, смешного is in the of form. The ending tells you about it. What piece of funny things do you have in this particular situation? Just like in English, uh, this phrase implies that the person who is saying it probably um, upset or he doesn't understand what what is funny in this situation. Probably the fun, <laughs> other people are making fun of him or her. Who knows? So. You will say this phrase when you are, you are upset or you are angry. Maybe you are angry with them. Same with next phrase. Что непонятного? Or что тут непонятного? An angry teacher may say. Ну что тут непонятного? What is unclear? I've been explaining it for an hour. What is still unclear here? Что страшного? What, what is scary? Что тут страшного? And actually, you already know this word from one of our previous videos when we were replying to uh, sorry and thank you. Actually, this is a response to sorry. Ничего страшного. Right? So, ничего страшного. Что страшного? Ничего страшного. The of form. The чего form. Что тут такого? This is a very common phrase and we use it when, for example, a person is doing something but this is looked down upon or is not approved by other people. For example, a man is taking dance lessons. Some people especially in Russian, may think that it's not a man's hobby. It's not for men to take dance, um, dancing lessons. And he might say, а что такого? So what is wrong with that? So I'm taking dancing classes. So, so what? А что тут такого? So I hope you understood this concept. Something, again, a part of something bigger, some vast, vast concept. But in this particular situation, we only have a small part of it, a particular piece of this. Very good. Uh, this was it for today. And please rewind the video if you haven't practiced. Practice, make your own examples. Put them in the comments for me to check. If you have any questions about this topic, please also put them in the comments. And of course, that was not it about the question чего, because you probably noticed that we have looked at only two contexts, the absence or non-existence and the, and the of form. Actually, there are more. And in Russian grammar, this is the genitive case. The genitive case uh, is the case that has a lot of meanings. So we will continue looking at them, analyzing and practicing. So very good. I'll see you in the next video. Book lessons at our school. Watch my videos and let's achieve Russian proficiency together.